So there are various times when we would, it's conditions are dry and we wish it would rain or conditions are too much rain and we wish it would, the rain would go somewhere else. Or um, we've got a cold uh, spell coming through and we wish it were warming, warmer. How can we in a local region modify the weather, change the conditions of the atmosphere? And actually there is ongoing work in that area um, and we have sought to change the atmosphere, the conditions of the atmosphere in kind of three different ways. There's three different categories. One is to use some sort of man-made energy device to modify the atmosphere. An example of that is to use a heater or helicopters to move warm air in. Another one is to um, use, let's see, to use things that the Earth, the Earth system already does and kind of tweak um, things here on Earth that can make a difference. So for instance, we talked about the fact that when the sun's rays hits the Earth's surface, the, the, the type of surface that those rays interact with make a difference as to whether that heat will be retained or lost or that sort of thing. So an example of that would be um, you know, using uh, something that absorbs thermal energy, something dark to kind of try to modif make an impact on, on the atmospheric temperatures in that case, which actually could have consequences on precipitation too. Another way is we can um, trigger um, or intensify um, an, an atmospheric event like precipitation. Uh, precipitation maybe wasn't going to occur and then we trigger it to happen. An example of that we're going to look at <coughs> is basically um, seeding clouds with cloud condensation nuclei, CCNs. So um, starting with uh, actually interjecting something into the atmosphere to trigger um, a response, something that the Earth, um, excuse me, the hydrological cycle does anyway. Um, so back in 1940s, um, they began playing around with uh, introducing cloud condensation nuclei within clouds um, to go ahead and begin the condensation process. And then after you have those cloud condensation nuclei, hopefully the collision coalescence process can kick in, or the Bergeron process. Um, cloud condensation nuclei come in the form of silver iodide or dry ice. And you can see actually this plane is spreading silver iodide, I believe. So with those cloud condensation nuclei in place, they're trying to get the, this says the Bergeron process started. Must be some sort of cool or uh, cold cloud. So cloud seeding, mixed success. Um, as, I, as this slide or this note says, or your textbook says, there are um, research in this area is ongoing. Um, the results, like I said, kind of mixed success. I talked about the updrafts, okay? Remember, this is what the Earth tends to do all the time. We have a, we'll call it a vertical kind of flow of air upward. That's the updraft. And so the amount of updraft we generally can't control. And actually, if this is my water vapor, you know, we can't control that either. And those both affect um, this cloud seeding process. So, and this is kind of a, a little jab at us. I mean, as kind of straightforward as the hydrological cycle is, you would think maybe that we could affect it more, but it's more complicated than it looks, I suppose. It's large, it's a, it's a monster of a thing. The other thing about um, kind of making it rain here and not rain there is there might be some ethical issues. I mean, you know, if we make the clouds dump, for instance, here in the United States, where are the clouds not dumping? So, I don't know. So here's that plane again, probably spraying silver iodide, AGI, and here are the resultant clouds. And your author notes that actually um, this is kind of a fake cloud, you know, a cloud that was forced to form, and you kind of see these gaps here. That, that might, you know, make you wonder how long it's going to be there. So cloud seeding is not a done deal. 
Um, we can, on the ground, though, do a similar sort of cloud seeding thing to make fog clear. You know, fog is uh, basically we've got uh, a cloud at ground level. We can go ahead and promote condensation if we uh, incorporate, um, let me go back, if we incorporate some sort of cloud condensation nuclei. Uh, dry ice, uh, solid CO2 actually does a good job for that. Um, the other thing that we can do is to, um, I guess that's not promoting, oh. Two, one. Well, here's another way of manipulating, uh, specifically uh, manipulating the atmosphere to clear fog. And it happens. I mean, if we have an uh, airport runway or a highway that we definitely just need to get the fog out of the way, one way to do it is this way. If it's a cold, uh, if it's a cold fog, we can go ahead and um, make that super, promote super cooled water within the cold fog. And the way we would do that is to add uh, dry ice, and then <clears throat> the ice crystals will settle and the fog will clear. Alternatively, this approach to warm fog, to get that warm fog out of the way, we've got a couple of options here. One is to heat the air, and remember that warm air can hold more moisture, so if you heat the air, it'll lower the relative humidity and your fog will clear. Another thing we can do to manipulate that situation is to bring down dry air from above, and that will also lower the relative humidity. So these are a couple of ways that we try to kind of manipulate um, our atmosphere, our environment, in this case fog. Well, control of hailstorms. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, hailstorms, if you research it much, actually the hail that comes with thunderstorm can be quite damaging to crops and to other things. But historically, I'm going to show you a gizmo that they actually used to uh, um, create a strong noise with the intent of breaking up a, uh, breaking up a hailstorm. Isn't that interesting? Actually, there's mixed success with that. Another way to try to combat hail um, a hailstorm would be to go ahead and take that, that thunderstorm cloud, the cumulonimbus cloud, and to seed it with something. Um, again, the AGI, the silver iodide, um, has been used to with mis mixed success to go ahead and make cumulonimbus clouds so you won't get the hailstorm. So, not quite sure either one of those, but... So here's a picture of the gizmo. Um, that created a large noise to try to make it so the, the thunderstorms didn't have hail associated with them. Again, mixed success. It kind of reminds me, though, it's an old-timey picture, and it reminds me of the snake oil salesman. Um, this, then, actually kind of shows us why we would ever try to manipulate the atmosphere, keep it to prevent it from sending hail our way. Again, hail can be a very damaging um, phenomenon. If you get plants at the wrong stage, they aren't going to make it. Uh, frost prevention. I mean, how many times have we heard that our uh, citrus in Florida are at risk because of frost at the wrong time? So how can we try to combat frost? Well, first off, there's a, another term. Frost is differentiated from white frost this way, and I, it's kind of a fine differentiation if you ask me. But how do we prevent frost? Well, a couple different ideas. One is we can conserve the heat. In a minute, you're going to see we can cover the plants, and we can cover the plants with plastic, or we can cover the plants with um, some particulates that help kind of conserve the energy of the earth. Remember that that earth is going to try to, as it becomes nighttime, re-radiate its heat away. So if we cover the earth, then we can conserve its heat. Smudge fires are a way to kind of put little particulates over the earth's surface so it stays warmer. This is interesting. You can actually take your plants and sprinkle them with a little bit of water. And then what you're counting on is as that liquid goes ahead and if it does freeze, 
uh, go ahead and fall, sol form a solid, then you're going to have a little bit of heat release, the latent heat of um, solidification or fusion. Um, and it's that release of heat that you're, that little warming effect that you're counting on. Um, another one is we can mix air um, kind of as the earth re-radiates its heat away. Sometimes we actually end up with a pocket of warmer air above colder air. And uh, we can actually kind of try to mix this down. Or we can have heaters. So these are some figures here. This, is, uh, this one over here is showing you how to mix the air. And again, we would try to, um, over a long cold night with clear skies, we would try to kind of bring that warm air down. This one is showing you um, heaters. These are little heaters. It looks like little maybe citrus plants. That's definitely a citrus plant. And this one actually, they sprinkled the fruit with liquid water and knew that it was going to freeze and counted on the latent heat of uh, fusion. So um, we've talked a lot in Chapter 5 about clouds, formation of clouds, etc. And actually there's a project out there who is looking at cloud cover global, cloud cover throughout the world. And as we talk about climate change, you know, the Earth's surface temperatures are generally warming. Um, what sort of consequence does that have on cloud cover? What types of clouds and where are the clouds? Are there more clouds? Because as we know, um, clouds will have an effect on blocking incoming radiation and actually um, have a, a somewhat of a warming effect too. But this is an ongoing project.